Detective Howard Green on Paragon Island. Chapter Zero Paragon Island. So, what do we know about this place? asked a trim figure in a low, unconcerned voice. This was Private Investigator Howard Green. His mother, always the mystique herself, kept him in the dark about his father's business, or why he was never around. She passed away while he was in college studying forensics and psychology. Her death wasn't a mystery to be solved, though. She had him in her early 40s, so by the time he was a junior in college, after age and heartbreak overtook her, it wasn't a surprise when the old reaper came to call. The place is Paragon Island, answered a taller, broader man with a voice rasping with age himself. It's practically like if Savannah and New Orleans bumped uglies and their baby was christened by the devil. Bad juju that place. This man had stretched his arms out over a map of the eastern part of the United States and drawn a red circle around a hardly noticeable island a few miles off the coast of Georgia. The responding party was that of Spencer Spencer, P.I. Green's friend and colleague. They had been tied for several years, but only grew closer after Green defended Spencer in a raid where it was every man for himself. According to the squad leader, once a handful of his comrades were taken down in an abandoned apartment building turned meth manufacturing plant. Dilapidated, sure, but the place crawled with tweakers and makers so subtly one might have considered them more spectral than whole figures. An ant farm. That's what they compared it to. Crawlers and freaks busting out the most common street drug in the world by now and turning a profit so high that multi-million dollar companies might have taken notes, if anybody else knew about it except for the squad that infiltrated them. The leader turned to leave those remaining to the opposing side's mercies. He was caught off guard in the hallway and stabbed in the neck by a low-level fiend who was later praised for his kill. This would eventually lead to his quick rise in ranks, but no matter how high a fiend gets promoted, they're still lower than the lowest creatures on Earth. Green helped Spencer escape by knocking over a cooking station and setting fire to the third floor. They tumbled out onto the fire escape and into an empty dumpster. Green suffered some chemical burns and abrasions. While Spencer dislocated his left hip, fractured two vertebrae, and bit his tongue, which was, as he put it, the worst part about the fight. But he owed Howard Green his life, and his life was where he intended to fulfill that obligation. While there have been reports of ritualistic sacrifices performed beyond the Great Wall, Spencer began. Of China? Green interrupted. Spencer shook his head unamused. It was unlike him to seem so dismal. No. It's the war separating the city from the sea. There's a giant rock structure that was built so long ago that all they know about it is some of the stones were used in the construction of one of the first buildings. There are about two or three miles between it and the coastline, all the way around the city. There's a well that's since fallen to disuse after the flood. This well, or makeshift altar, has all of these weird symbols and candles around it. Too often, lately, there seems to be new evidence of witchcraft performed at it, and worse, bodies are found somewhere within its vicinity, if they're found at all. Green asked the clearly shaken veteran, What's the pattern? Only the well and the witchcraft, and I don't like it. Hence your paranoia. Green smiled again. Spence, we don't do the supernatural. Personally, I hardly even believe in that stuff. Spencer pointed with a snapping finger. But you do believe in it. And we do uncover the villains of the world and bring them to justice. 
Without a decent or at least non-offensive rebuttal, Green nodded. Yeah, I guess you're right. How did you hear about this? It's in the papers every week, Howard. His friend said. Don't you read? Green sat in his chair with a sort of relief in his now unfurled brow. Nah, that stuff's too depressing. He propped his elbows over the map on the desk. If it's in the papers, then aren't the local authorities taking care of it? That is their job, Spence. Spencer pulled an envelope from his interior pocket of his coat. Well, he said, there's this too. He tossed it at his partner's entwined knuckles. Green opened it and read softly. Dear investigators, Green and Spencer. He stopped and pointed at the line as he smiled at the towering man in front of him. Hey, they put my name first. Yeah, yeah, rebuked Spencer. Just keep reading. The seated detective continued. There are some very strange things happening on the island of Paragon. It seems like every few days another person has either found dead or has gone missing. And the brutality of each murder is progressively getting worse. There's a place inside the wall that runs about ten blocks wide. Santana Street. That's where the old city tours and witchy shops are. And just outside the wall is where the first body was found. I'm not saying that there's a connection between the locations of the murders. I just find it hardly ignorable that the old well is becoming a place of practice for the covens in town. The mayor has opted to shut Santana Street down until the murders are solved. But more and more people continue to show up. The tours end after dark, and the entire ten blocks of Santana Street shut down. Lights off, doors locked, gates sealed, but they don't even keep the road lamps on until about 5 a.m. I don't know about you, but it just seems like a perfect place of opportunity if you ask me. Voices can be heard in the dark, laughing, singing, footsteps too. They echo down the street of Santana, almost as if they materialize there, and fade out beyond the wall. Since the shutdown, there have been more killings, more disappearances. Those who have gone missing haven't all been on Santana, but a few streets behind it in the hotels. When asked during press conferences, the hotel managers just claim they left without notice to the staff, but would leave the keys in the door. All of this has me concerned for all Paragonians. If this rash of injustice spreads any farther, Paragon Island may very well be doomed. Please help. Detective Green flipped the letter over, then picked up the envelope. Who sent it? Spencer just stared at his partner. Did they at least send a check or something? Green asked. No. His partner frowned. Then it isn't our business. Green tossed the letter back to the end of the desk. What else we got? Nothing. He responded. Just a bunch of corpses and missing persons cases. But if that doesn't wind you up, then I guess it's time that we wind this up. Howard Green had never really been a pushover. With his experience, with what he had seen, there was no room for sympathy, no room for empathy. But when it came down to it, Spencer knew how to soften him up. By this time, his friend had quit the job umpteen times, but Howard didn't let him walk out the door. Fine. Green pulled himself from his desk chair. Let's go. Get your stuff. Wait. Spencer spun around. You, uh, you mean tonight? It's a full moon. Green stated as he began to pack a meager duffel bag. Went out to Spence. This is your case. I figured you'd want to take point. Or at least, try to as soon as possible. Spencer, a giant to most, had been reduced to a stammering mass. I mean, don't you think that this would be better solved after the looms aren't so active? You're serious? Howard stopped. And allow so many potential victims to suffer? All because of what? Superstition? Well, he responded quietly. I've just heard stories. A big 
reason why I've never been. Green grinned cynically. Why I've never been, he mocked. So, I guess this means you won't be meeting me there. Or I'll head over in a few days, his shaky friend said. After the full moon, you mean. Spencer nodded, knowing he disappointed Detective Green. So, Green began again. What about this witchcraft and the witchy shops? What's the deal with them? He shrugged with lowered shoulders and replied, I don't know. Mistresses of Satan are where I draw the line. Draw the line for what? Howard chuckled, packing his last few belongings for the trip. Work. Or women.